Review, 2023 Genesis GV60 puts a more luxurious spin on the Ionic 5 and EV6. Please support us by pressing the like button and subscribe so that this channel will grow and provide many benefits for you, thank you. The new 2023 Genesis GV60 represents the first EV for the Korean luxury automaker as it transitions towards an all-electric lineup by 2030. While the company's gas-powered lineup has taken on new platforms that have given it some distance from its Hyundai counterparts, the new electric SUV heads back in the opposite direction and becomes the third vehicle we've tested that is built on the Hyundai eGMP platform. The first two are the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and Kia EV6, which debuted as 2022 models. The similarities surface in the new 2023 Genesis GV60 with side-by-side -side screens atop the dashboard, the tiny front storage space, and the surprisingly spacious interior dimensions. But the GV60 adds a new level of luxury along with some new technology that Genesis hopes will give it some clear advantages over its less sophisticated, and more affordable, counterparts. I spent a day behind the wheel of the GV60 on a very hot, 96-degree day in Austin, Texas, to find out if those changes make it different enough. The exterior stylings of the Ionic 5 and EV6 have been widely praised and I think I prefer both of those vehicles to the GV60, from the outside at least. Viewed from both the front and rear three-quarters diagonals, the proportions and Genesis details like the two-piece stacked headlights and taillights give it some added class. But from the side the rear overhang looks awkwardly abbreviated, so that the rear spoiler appears to jut out further rearward than the back of the liftgate, though in practice it does not. This stubbiness is not an optical illusion, the GV60 is nearly 5 inches shorter than the Ionic 5 and 7 inches shorter than the EV6. What the GV60 does offer is a much brighter color range than its counterparts, from copper, to bright green, to a very pleasing light blue slash teal called Hanoma Mint. The lower cladding stays the same on all the colors, but it's not as prominent as the bodywork on the Ionic 5 so it looks less offensive on lighter colors. Unlike its counterparts, there isn't a rear-wheel drive version of the GV60. It's offered in a pair of AWD trims, advanced and performance. Both models make the same amount of torque, 446 lbft, but the performance has a more powerful front motor that outputs 160 kilowatts versus 74 kilowatts on the advanced, giving it an advantage of 429 horsepower to 314 horsepower. A 77.4 kilowatt hour battery pack is the only option, and it provides an estimated 248 miles of range in the advanced and 235 miles in the performance. Our day of driving didn't cover enough ground, around 140 miles, to necessitate a charging stop, but the GV60 does offer stellar quick charging times. Its 800 volt charging architecture means that it can accept 235 kilowatts of power and quick charge from 10 to 80 percent in just 18 minutes, or add 64 miles in about 5 minutes at peak charging. The performance model I tested felt very quick. A stab of the pedal resulted in the instant torque jolt expected of an EV, and the GV60 pulls beyond highway speeds with ease. Mounted on the steering wheel are a pair of buttons for drive mode by the left thumb and boost mode by the right thumb. To have the most fun, push the left button to activate sport mode and then the right one to get the GV60 into its most powerful setting. It was previously announced that the GV60 would offer boost and drift driving modes, but I was only able to test the boost mode safely without a controlled track environment. Boost mode is only offered in performance models and lasts for 10 seconds, increasing output to 483 horsepower and 516 lbft of torque, which are gains of 54 horsepower and 70 lbft respectively. It also sharpens accelerator pedal inputs, so that even a tiny sliver of throttle results in a quick lurch forward and makes passing or getting onto the highway a fun adventure. Genesis says that there's a theoretical limit to the amount of times that you can activate this mode in a row as components get hotter. But on a very hot day I put it into boost mode about 6 times in a row without the GV60 pulling a Roberto Duran and saying no mas, so it seems to not put too much strain on the powertrain. The boost button also does something smart. 
If you hit the button mid-corner while off the accelerator pedal, it won't activate until you start to accelerate at exit so you get the full 10 second effect only after you get back on the pedal. The performance versions of the GV60 also add the same electronically controlled suspension with road preview found on the GV70, along with a mechanical limited slip differential. The second of those additions works flawlessly as the GV60 puts down its power with no real drama. The suspension is not as well sorted, surprisingly, given that we enjoyed this setup so much in the GV70. On smooth roads, the GV60's ride is impeccable, but on the often broken pavement around Austin, the suspension struggled to isolate the cabin from seams and uneven surfaces. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.